Okay, I made several videos about Einstein's description of gravity, and a bunch of people stepped up to defend Isaac Newton and or to tell me that I suck. But there's a hundred years of experiments showing that gravity isn't really a force. So today let's clean up some of the finer points of this actually non-existent debate. Number one, Einstein's theory reduces to Newton's theory when masses and energies are small. For many applications, Newton is a useful approximation of what gravity does. If all you're doing is calculating the interaction between the Earth and the Moon at various distances, for example, Newton will do just fine. You get into trouble with things like Mercury's orbit, though, because it's so close to the Sun. For that, you need Einstein's theory to correctly predict what gravity will do and how. Number two, gravity is often called one of the four fundamental forces. But that's a loose traditional term. When physicists are speaking rigorously, they usually call them the four fundamental interactions, in part because modern physics no longer considers gravity to be a force. From the standpoint of particle physics, gravity remains unexplained. It's kind of messed up, but one day it'll all get worked out. Number three, gravity looks like a force that accelerates things from the perspective of the ground. But modern physics defines this as an accelerated reference frame, and the laws of physics are written down as they operate in inertial reference frames, because that's where the laws take their simplest forms. Only in inertial reference frames does a nearby beam of light travel in a straight line, for example. And in that context, no force makes an apple fall to the ground. Now this is an important one. It isn't just a matter of perspective, because one perspective is objectively superior to the other one. Number four, gravity can do work, and work is defined as a force that's applied across a distance. In Newtonian terms, a bicycle on a hill has stored potential energy, which manifests as kinetic energy when gravity does work on the bike to bring it downhill. Stored potential energy actually isn't a thing in Einstein's theory. So if you're building a hydroelectric dam, it isn't going to help you. In that context, you can go ahead and consider gravity to be a force that does work, and you'll make useful calculations. Number five, there is a Newtonian interpretation of that demo where I drop the accelerometer and it reads zero as it's falling. Consider a simplified accelerometer modeled as two different masses attached by a spring. If we apply a force to the larger mass, the system is accelerated and the smaller mass drags behind inertially. But now let's give the whole thing a uniform electric charge and let's bring in a wall that carries the opposite charge. What will happen? The accelerometer will accelerate toward the wall. But since all of its components are being acted on uniformly, there's no acceleration reading. Finally, it hits something and stops. Now it does register an acceleration even though it's no longer accelerating. The accelerometer free falling in a gravitational field does the same thing. When it's falling, no acceleration reading. But if it's held in place, yes acceleration reading. So if you want to be Newtonian about things, we can think of mass as being like the charge of gravity, which acts on every atom uniformly and attracts everything to the ground the same, just as it does in the charged accelerometer case. To be clear though, this is not an inertial reference frame. A beam of light would curve in this frame, so it violates number three. It's an imperfect analogy with highly contrived conditions, but it's still a pretty cool thought experiment. So is gravity a force? No! Even though I would never say that Newton was wrong, he was definitely wronger compared to Einstein because Einstein's theory is just quantitatively much more accurate, and it's more generally applicable. It applies to inertial reference frames, accelerated reference frames, and even rotating reference frames. It led to the prediction of black holes and gravitational waves. Special and general relativity both have to be programmed into the GPS in order to keep the satellites and the ground clocks in sync. If all we had was Newton, your phone wouldn't be able to tell you where your house is when you're drunk. The Newtonian view is basically 
Gravity is a force that's everywhere, but it's invisible. It works in mysterious ways, and it cannot be tested with an accelerometer that's falling. But it loves you. Since it's so much more accurate and generalized, I've got a sneaking suspicion that Einstein's description is at least closer to how the universe actually works at a fundamental level than Newton's is. Look at it this way. When we were kids, it was fine to believe in the Santa Claus approximation of where presents came from, or the man and a woman sharing a special hug approximation of baby making. But we're adults now. If the conversation is about how the universe actually operates, at least according to the best theories we have, I think we can do away with the approximations. Oh, and the acceleration is upwards. <laughs>